Okay, so in this part, I'm gonna go over basically stripping the bed down all the way to just a straight flat bed and putting away the panels and everything. I had already shown a time lapse of removing all of this stuff in one of the previous videos, and that's kind of why I'm splicing this over it. I didn't do a really good job of recording that. I didn't expect that I was gonna put this, but I realized I don't really think there's anybody who's done it. Um, with these trucks being really old, a lot of this stuff gets run down. Troops have kind of hammered on it. So I just kind of wanted to walk through what all the proper pieces you should have. There's some differences in the different types of tarps. I have the older style tarp, and then there's a newer style one, and uh, some of the minor improvements I've made. So we'll go through that. Before talking about like installing everything, you don't actually need a lot of tools to remove it. When you look at the sections in the technical manual, it doesn't even tell you the sizes or anything, but it's a half inch wrench and a flathead screwdriver for removing the pieces that hold the troop seats and stuff. And then there's a really big nut on the one that has the handles. Some of the newer style trucks don't even have that one anymore. I actually ended up eliminating that on my truck. You'll see it later on, but just a average size adjustable wrench, a three quarter inch wrench or ratchet as well. Almost forgot. That's for undoing the bolt that holds the uh, bed stakes in for the bed sides. When you have an older beat up one like mine, you can use a regular hammer, but a lot of the parts are aluminum and fiberglass. So probably like a dead blow hammer mallet type thing. When you're installing the cargo cover and everything, multiple ratchet straps would be good to hold and squeeze everything together if it's bent out of shape or if you're missing some of the parts. And then maybe even some uh, good quality duct tape. And then uh, if your stuff's dirty, like I use in all my videos, some super clean. And uh, I have two different types, the original and then some of the aerosol can. Later on in the video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a giveaway for this exact setup right here. There's my hot helper with the TM. Because she knows how to read and I don't. All right, if you want to reference it in the technical manual, it's the operator's instruction manual, the uh, TAC-10. Uh, this is my printout one that I got with the truck. Uh, section 2-27. And in mine, it's weird. It just kind of immediately goes over. Normally, there's a beginning and there's some blank pages. And you can see that it was one of the changes, probably because the kits have upgraded and changed over time. One of my little notes, the front poles going across the top are 76 and one quarter inches. The rear ones are 72 and a quarter inches. Tell it's been a long day. Then section 312 talks about all the troop seat installation. Like I said, it's not very detailed. You can look in the PDF or if you have a physical copy, you can reference some of the stuff. We actually did look at it for the uh, cargo cover and it was, eh. but it's there. All right, as you can see, I already have everything stripped down to a complete flatbed, except for the light material handling crane. I just wanted to show the spots on the bed where some of the components are intended to be stored. And I say intended because it doesn't work. You have the spot for the bed stakes, the cargo sides, not for the troop seat uh, bed stakes. But on some of the older style, you just have two pins. Some of the newer style actually has like a little hatch right here. And you just lay the two for the side of the truck that you're on in there, stick the pins through and close it. Um, then there's a little hatch right here for the poles. And their intention was, was these are the poles for the cargo cover. I think they settled on the design of the bed and then they changed the cargo cover size a little bit. They don't all fit in here unless you're, I don't know, a magician. I'm really, I was really good at Tetris and I couldn't get it to fit, all fit in there. So um, I haven't found another use for it, but it's a nice open spot on the bed. And then the intention is, is that you could fold up the bows and there's three slots up here. The front slot is used when you're using the setup and you could put the three individual pieces and then 
tie it off to the front up here, just like the cargo cover. I think that's kind of silly to put them up there like that, unless you need to transport it with them folded up. I guess that's a good reason for it. I leave them off and store them here in the yard because the advantage of having it off is it reduces the overall height of the truck. That's just my opinion. Going to the other side of the truck. Like I said, same thing over here, stake pocket, pole pocket, bows. And then you have the panel stowage. When you're removing the side panels, I actually didn't realize this and I was like, what the hell is going on? Why won't these things just slide off? Uh, what you actually need to do is kind of like put them at a 45 degree angle and they're supposed to be pins and get that pin that's supposed to be there to line up like right here. And what I did, because I didn't care about that, was I just popped all the pins out so they're easier to take on and off. And I guess what that's for is if you wanna move the truck with the panels down, they won't vibrate out when it's folded down and accidentally fall off. I understand why they did that. You know, it has to be at the 45 degree angle so you explicitly need to take it off. I found it annoying. They do fit, but if you already have one of these trucks, you know that it's a pain. Um, basically, from my experience, is every single one of these trucks is a little different, and what you gotta do is find which panel fits in which part the best, and it's not gonna go in and out smoothly. I found here on this truck, I've, this one never works good because you have the bolts going through it for the mud flap. My center tailgate goes best in the middle because that's the hardest, longest, biggest, heaviest one to put in and then they're staggered. Um, you can see like the outboard part going up, outboard down, outboard up, and then also like hinge side also alternating so they're not hitting each other. And then not so much over here. And then on my truck, I don't know if somebody did it in the past, but these were bent a little bit, so I had to bend them a little bit too to make it as easy as possible to slide them in and out. And some of them still need to be kind of kicked in and really yanked on to get them out, but they do fit in there. If you want to keep like the rest of the components on the truck, you do have the you know tool kit here. And then everybody seems to forget, but you've got tool storage here on the passenger side. If you want to keep as many pieces on the truck as possible, you do have options. I reinstalled just this one with everything nice and open, just to show. I ended up changing mine out to some easier to use bolts because what comes on here, like those bolts that bite in, the more you loosen or tighten them, at least on the kit I had, which suck. The way you take these off is you have to have a smaller, thinner flathead, and you should really only need to do this like a half a turn, full turn, get your half inch wrench on there. Or if it's that handle I was talking about that's near the back, with the big adjustable, which could be a pain, do a full turn just to make it a little bit easier. And then if it's been on there for a while, and it'll pop right off and there's no real need to tighten it back down. And then the rest of it, when you're removing it, you start from the back of the truck and move your way up. Just like when you install, you work your way from the front of the truck and move back. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. These top rails, they're just, as you put it together, they're held in place. And the troop seats, you just pull the pins. That's it. And don't pinch your fingers. Here's all the pieces that you should have for putting this on your truck, minus obviously the tarp. There's five longer poles on an LMTV that go between the very front bow and the middle bow. And then there's five shorter ones. Then you obviously have the three bows there's gonna be one for the middle that has little points for those bars in between. Uh, these bows may be a little bit different. Uh, some of the newer style ones can actually break down into a smaller piece. This is the older style, that's one solid piece. These slide on some of the crossbars. They help support the tarp so it doesn't get little spots that hold water. Then these straps are probably the most common ones that people don't have. There's two of them, and they work on an MTV or an LMTV. They have different spots, and it's basically for holding the whole thing together. You'll see it in the uh, 
time lapse of us putting it together, me and my wife. The technical manual sh shows you roughly how it all goes together. It's hard to really explain it. I mean, once it sort of, sort of starts going together, it is pretty self-explanatory. Like the strap, if it's not worn out, you can see that little label right there. It says front. That's the part you put towards the front. You get it strapped around. You run it to the back. As you start getting everything together, you tighten it up more. As everything gets tighter, you keep cinching it tighter, and it holds it together tighter. When you're putting the stake beds in, the center one has this slot in it. You can use a center one in the back, but you cannot use a back one in the center because it has this pin, at least in my bed. All right, so I have on one of these older style ones, every other one has one of these hooks, which is for when you roll up the outside. For securing it, in general, the revised technical manual, the newer style ones have button pieces that snaps that go around that make this a little more obvious but on these take the strap with the little handle run it behind the low bar bring it up you have your two metal rings pull it up then your bottom ring run the loop back down in and then and then you don't want to make these super tight until you have them all in place. Then go around and snug them all down. All right, working the way to the outside with straps. Probably going to look different on yours again because this is older. I know they've revised it, but have this in the front. And there's a strap that comes off it at an angle. That's going to come to here. Then you should have one long bungee that's going to kind of zigzag should have like a similar pattern that you do with it like this and it's going to go back and forth and basically hold all this down mine was all jacked up and had a lot of broken stuff so i ended up modifying it so i don't really know if this is done properly but i did the best i could with it basically spliced in and kind of made some of my own bungees off other gear that i had here um i will put some links in the description and uh, materials to replace it on yours. Just kind of went along and did my best to make it tight. Uh, if you remember, if you've watched back on my very first video, the person who had the truck before me never actually strapped down the back here and driving with it waving, so it was all tattered, and I ended up just cutting it. Um, may neaten that up a little bit better. Tighten these up here too. And then on this side, there were some missing D-rings. So I used some Grimlocks from like some of my tactical gear and then there were some spots where the Grimlocks wouldn't work And I just used some heavy-duty zip ties and it seemed to do the trick. That was my first problem and Obviously, it's really dirty. It needs to be cleaned. I'm gonna do that coming up through the turret is gonna be the easiest way to show this I think you can see right there. I got a tear and I actually got a way I'm gonna go about fixing that uh, with some stuff that I acquired But it's gonna need to be cleaned first. So I'm gonna take care of cleaning it all 
All right, it's the super clean giveaway time. Uh, now that you just watched me clean off the bed cover with it, uh, if you wanna win an original bottle of super clean and an aerosol, uh, cause your kid's kicking sand all over you and you wanna clean it off. Um, <laughs> leave a comment down in the description that just says, I want to win some super clean and <laughs> kids are nuts. And 30 days after the day I publish this video, I will pick one of the winners. And if I reply to your comment saying that you won, you have to respond to me with your name and your mailing address to info at callmecult.com. So that way I can pass your information to super clean because they're, they're the ones actually doing the giveaway and they're helping me out with it. So thanks super clean. They're cool. They're based. All right. I'm about to show you a clip of me doing a repair on the cargo cover, the canvas part, because mine had a weak spot in the top from the very center bow. And uh, it would allow some water to get in the front up by the cab. And what I actually used was a bigger version of this. And it's a military tent patch repair. It worked phenomenally. I've taken that canvas since I did the repair off twice from this truck, driven it all many hours on the highway and stuff like that without an issue. They didn't go like flying off. It keeps the water and stuff out. And as you can see, in, you'll about to see in the clip, I didn't really do the best job of like trying to clean the top or anything like that off. Good option. They pop up on eBay every once in a while. If I happen to find them available somewhere all the time, I'll share a link in the description or like an eBay search in the description if I find out exactly what they called. So here's one of the things, your hands are gonna get really nasty. Uh, the backings are extremely sticky and there's no way to not get it all over yourself. The first two I actually had someone at work help me peel it. I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to do this by myself. <laughs> At least I got it off by myself. And there's nothing neat about this. I can't really get up there to smooth it out a whole lot because I got so much sticky stuff on my hands. It looks like it's going into a spot where I didn't clean very well, but We'll see, but we'll see how it holds up. I think they'll do the trick though. I think if they sit out in the warm sun or whatever for a little bit, they'll bond. And then once it dries, I gotta get down without getting sticky stuff everywhere now. Sydney, what are you doing in there? You're your balloon game? <laughs> All right, so for on the sides, rolling them up like this, on the old style, I'm not really sure what it looks like on the new style like this. You have the straps that have the longer pieces. You basically just, it's way easier with two people. What we did that works to make it happen pretty quickly is kind of take one foot, fold it, one foot, fold it, and then roll it up as tightly as you can. And I rolled it up on the inside like this. You can roll it up on the outside, it really doesn't matter. I just liked it like that because it's another thing keeping it secure to the pole. And then, take the strap and run it to the outside and there's hooks on the outside and loops. And it's kind of a pain, but you gotta lean out here and then you can see that the hook goes on out here and then you pull the straps tight as you want and it holds it secure and there's gonna be three of them that go all the way down to hold each section up. And then in the front, it has three, and it's pretty similar to, to do it. I mean, you know, the bottoms are gonna have different straps and bungees and things like that. But, you know, you just get it up there the best that you can. It's not really, a, my OCD wants everything to be perfectly neat, but it really doesn't end up being that neat, especially with how out of shape than old this one is, but it works. All right, storing the troop seats and the uprights for them. I found this is kind of the 
neatest way to do it. I'm on top of one of my shelters here and uh, four little cinch straps and kind of alternating the way that the seats are and then put in the two sides and the uprights on top of it. Uh, then you could just carry them around. Can wrestle it by yourself. Two people makes it much easier. It's kind of the neatest way to put it together. And then if you want to leave it in the bed, still leaves quite a bit of room. So I changed the way that this handle is mounted here on this troop seat piece. Normally they're attached with this awkward large nut that has the hollow in it so that you could get at the flat head piece. It made it really hard to get a big screwdriver in there and it, it, it just was a nightmare getting this, this piece off. So I drilled some holes and I used rivet nuts and just bolted it directly to this piece. It doesn't obstruct anything really. And then it made it so I could use standard hardware when I replaced all the hardware. So I also used my Dremel and redid some of the flat head pieces and things like that and just neatened it up new washers. And it made reassembling all this uh, much better all the way around and kind of learned the better way to go about doing it. One last thing I wanted to include in the video is using these. These are the things that hold the troop seats up and folded. These come normally underneath the seats attached with bungees, just so they don't get lost on the kits normally. And I think most people don't know how to use these. You'd be surprised how many people I even see on the bases that have some crazy stuff going on where it's like this and the bungees holding it and they're still flopping around. That's not how you use it. The way you're supposed to use it is like this. So that way it holds it on both sides and it could be slid on and off. That's the intention of how to use it. And the only reason why that bungee cord is there is so that they don't get lost. I took it off and I keep them all in the bag when they're out of the way. Yeah, when you're driving, they can kind of fall off. But the idea is, is if both of them are folded up, there's actually really not enough room well, here I am saying that, and then there is. But when the kit is all new and tight, I think the idea was is that there's not really enough room for it to fall off when, even if it was to vibrate. But if you really wanted to play it safe, put a little piece of duct tape. Just a side note, I put this piece up here for instructional purposes. The intention is, is these small seats are supposed to be over the bed pockets. You shouldn't really have a big seat over the bed pockets because the reason being is if you need to get it a bed pocket or you need to get out of the way for <clears throat> the ladder onboarding you don't have a big seat in the way so the other way to fold the seats up if you have an older seat set like you can see on this large seat is this old strap type honestly i think these were the better option they're not as quick as you run it around and it has a hook and when they're not old it's just a cinch strap and then you just cinch it down tight and because it's all painted and it's old i can't cinch it down as tightly but the idea is it keeps it probably the reason why they didn't is because it'll still move around a little bit but I think that's a little bit neater and you won't lose a piece like that. But either way, they work. Some of the newer style seats, I think they switched from being fiberglass and they're kind of like a, more of like a robust aluminum so that they don't start to break down if weight is put on them. And that's that.
Thank you for letting me finish that, kids.